Matt Pack out of Final, Final Doom, the Plutonia experiment at prior events, and uh, this is just going to be more of the same. It's based on Doom 2. Uh, got some great stuff in it. I can't wait for that hype run. And uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of... Uh, a little bit more great classic video game music, just like we had there in that Streets of Rage run. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been informed that it is that time. You've all been waiting for it, and it's here now. Let's send it to the main stage for Final Doom by King Dime. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's get straight into this. We'll uh, do a quick couch introduction here. Uh, so we'll start on this side. I'm Jovo. I'm for Shock Blast. Maddie Ice. And I'm King Dime. Uh, all right, uh, let's do a countdown here. So I'll start in five, four, four three, three, two, two one, one, go. Doom! Doom! All right, so you start off immediately here, Doom Guy. Uh, grabbing, so first off, we grab the Berserk upgrade here, which uh, gives a bunch of pension damage. And also hit down the blue armor, and basically this first level is pretty straightforward. It's a lot of running around, a lot of punching. Yeah, the Berserk Pack's gonna multiply uh, tenfold the damage for your punch, so you're gonna get, you're gonna be in the range where, with a little bit of luck, we can, we can KO imps and pinkies with one hit, usually two. Um, we're gonna take out most of the former humans with one hit as well. So there's actually pretty good variance there, being able to kill both chain gunners in one hit means don't take a lot of damage, don't have to rely on the extra health kits, and you get the chain gun now. Yeah, and we're conser we get to conserve a lot of it, a lot of just standard bullet ammunition on the first level because of that as well. Yeah, you see at the very end there, like, I already took 24 damage from that chain gunner. But uh, I'll do a quick explanation of the movement mechanics. So we've got two different types of strafing. We have basic strafing, which is SR40, and we have uh, SR50, which makes us move even faster if we use a turn input and a strafe on input. And that allows us to move 41% faster. I actually forgot the red key here, so uh, we're going to have to go back and grab that. Got to do the maps in order. There we go. Got the red key. There we are. I'm just going to... I'm going to turn down the music here just a touch. There. So we're going back here to backtrack through all the pinkies and the specters, and that's so that we can do a major sequence break on this map to get the yellow key um, early. Yes, yeah, so you, you can see he's already oh, he's already taking quite a bit of damage, there. even though even though you know we're only in the second map of this pack here. Come on. Ooh. Yeah, here you see him getting blocked by monsters from below. Uh, this is related to. Doom being uh, not exactly 3D, more 2.5D. So monsters yeah, have infinite fun. height uh, and are impassable from above. Like every map, too, that I've dealt with, like in any of the IWADs, you just get these uh, crazy difficult sections with all the hit scanners. Um, because hit scan is undodgeable, there's nothing I can do to really mitigate a bunch of damage. Yeah, and you'll see you picked up another blue armor there. So the blue armor is going to give you 50% of your damage taken out of your armor before your health. So that's going to give us a lot of a lot of leeway with with how many hits we're able to take out of some of these these tough hit scanners in the beginning of the maps. The berserk pack here also used as a good free 100% health since it's always going to up you to at least 100. Uh, I'm not, luck not liking my health values here. Can get back up to 63%. So, um, at this point, I can talk about the history of uh, the team, TNT uh, map set. So, um, at the time it was made by a notable mapping team called Team TNT. 
um, which was very uh, influential in the, in the 90s. Uh, one member that you're going to see on the map of, in the next map, actually, uh, it was Ty Halderman, who was also very notable later on for maintaining the It Games archive, which is the biggest archive of player-made maps, as well as contributing along with uh, a couple other people, Jim Flynn and Lee Killev on Team TNT, to the influential Boom source port. Um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2015, and the Id Games archive has been passed on to two other members of the community, Bloodshitter and the Green Herring. Okay, now we're getting into map four. This was a map that was uh, created by Ty Halderman, and it features two different copies of the map where you go into a teleporter later on, and there's like a different version of the map. But for some reason, the exit was put on the first location. Like, I go over a line trigger, and I open it up, and then I just backtrack, so we're already done. <laughs> and in this map, we're going to see an unusual uh, trick that combines two aspects of Doom uh, tricks. So the first is uh, something that's called momentum preservation. So here he is trying to get into the uh, coordinate closest to the wall, so the zeroth coordinate, um, to develop a boost against the wall which um, allows him to perform something called a key grab, where um, because he is moving inside the wall, uh, the game engine tries to move him into the wall uh, and fails, but before failing, it actually performs a check for whether he picked up any items, and in this case, he picked up a key grab in a different room behind the wall. Yeah, and one thing you'll notice here, you know, anybody who's, who's seen the Plutonia runs is, we're using, there's a lot less of the higher health enemies in this map set in particular. Um, you're not going to see a lot of a lot of Hell Knights or Barons or Mancubus or Arachnatrons. And that has its own challenges compared to that kind of enemy set. So we're going to have a lot more hit scanners, things that we can't really dodge. Well, you can't dodge them, but uh, there's a lot of random elements that we're dealing with too. So like any of these shotgunners, like if they hit me with a blast, they can do between 9 and 45 damage. Uh, chain gunners between 5 and 15. And like all of these numbers that I'm giving out are in intervals. So they can do 5 or 10 or 15, uh, for example. And we're going to be um, returning to this hub room over and over with uh, the reactor. So we just got the blue key. We're going to go up to the top and subsequently get the red key also. Um, this is a this is a good spot for some donations, Brolix. All right, you got it. Here is a five dollar donation from Ingo J Aeroplane, who said it's that time of year again, and I've never been so hyped. May the consoles bleep and nobody sleep. Well, we'll you know for Doom, we'll make it may the systems bleep, right? But uh, and then uh, we've got uh, Jody Joy with a one hundred dollar donation. Uh, no comment with that, but just wanted to recognize the generosity there. Thank you for contributing to Doctors Without Borders here. Also have a twenty dollar donation from a Chef Book, who says MSF, the runners and the staff are all so inspiring. Never stop. So we have the caco demons that um, we were dealing with there on the high ground, but they're going to float down. Because um, if you recall what, where I uh, picked up the blue key is we're going to return to that section and hit a final switch so that we can get to the exit. And then the caco demons are going to converge on this side. We're going to take them out. And when I talk about the reactor for the whole map, uh, that's what it is. So we have... <laughs> S some artistic license was taken. Yes. <laughs> Got the Hell Knight following me all the way down. Let's get to the end here. Um, this texture all around is like intended to be a window texture, but now it's it's a lift texture. So we're moving on into the mili the military installation portion of TNT, starting off with the prison. And uh, we just picked up an awesome weapon with the, with the plasma rifle. Yeah, the plasma rifle is basically just a really, really more higher damage chain gun type weapon. It has full automation, same, same kind of firing rate. 
but does significantly higher damage. Yeah, chain gun is 5 to 15 damage, and the, uh... Um, this, this way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plasma rifle is 5 to 40. And at this point, you see he, uh, on the previous lift, he picked up an invulnerability sphere, uh, which makes the screen, which is what made the screen go white like this, and it uh, lasts for about 30 seconds. And in the last part, uh, there's going to be a section of pillars that we're coming up across, but it can be tricky um, because if you fall off, just like that, um, the specters can get into position to block you. But we got lucky there and we were able to get to the exit. Now we have a map called Metal with metal music, and it's going to be full of metal textures. <laughs> Unfortunately, we will get to hear this MIDI a few more times during during this run, and it's one of the better ones in this map set, actually, I think. Yeah, TNT features uh, a whole new cast of midis, uh, which Plutonia did not have, which is a nice feature. Uh, here's going to be a line death skip, so you'll see me, like, gingerly going around that switch, and that's going to skip some monster closets um, from opening up. It wouldn't be a doom run without Dime hitting himself with a rocket. <laughs> yeah. Not. Come on. I wanted to have high health going into Stronghold on map 9, but I don't think I'm going to get that at 119% and 37, so uh, well, we're going to use that. Just a few more saves than we were hoping yeah. to here, so. Just in case. Fortunately, in the RTA style of Doom speedrunning, the number of saves used doesn't really matter. Of course, for record runs, you have to uh, not die at any point or save or load, so... Yeah. Based, based on the demo recording functions of Doom, if you, if you press the escape key at all, it ends the demo, so there's no, there's no way to save or load, really. So we picked up the blur artifact. Um, like, if you were doing record attempts, you would skip the blur artifact. Um, but this gi gigantic... I don't know what you would call this room, but um, it's difficult to mitigate the unavoidable damage. Yeah, the blur effect uh, basically makes monsters uh, constantly missed by uh, up to a certain percentage of angle. And for hit scan, it is helpful because they often just don't hit you at all. But for uh, projectile style monsters such as cyber demons, it actually makes it much harder. Um, to dodge anything because you cannot no longer predict what they're where they're actually going to shoot. Yeah, depending depending on how how well you can see the infant fireballs, or you might tell that some of them aren't even really aiming at Doom Guy at all. Last little part, and then we have to do a final kind of tense rush into a few arachnatrons and uh, pray that I stay at eighty six percent health because I, I really want this going into Stronghold. Okay, 52%. We can, we can hold out with this. We but still have Armor 2, which is really important. Yeah, Stronghold is the hardest map in... I would say the hardest pure combat map in any of the IWADs. Uh, like, when you're... I can't deal with 10% health. It's just... <laughs> yeah, this, this map is... Difficult enough that the the highest difficulty level single map IL speedrun took over ten years, I believe, to finish from the release of this, um, this map pack. That IL came out and it was 2010, and the release for TNT was 1996. So it was is 14 years after release to finish the final demo on Nightmare, which is that's a lot of time. I believe it's just under a touch under 300 enemies across the entire map. And it's all claustrophobic, close quarters. Yeah. If if you're if you're trying to speed run this map as an IL and kill all the enemies on Nightmare, you'll, you'll probably find that a lot of your attempts don't even get out of the first room. Yeah, because Nightmare features respawning enemies, uh, trying to kill everything is futile. So you kind of have to rush and hope you don't get too much damage from. Uh, the hit scanners. Not to mention on that difficulty, the AI reacts and moves much faster. So it's more difficult to even avoid 
hit scan damage than it is in a normal type of run. I'm gonna send out a bunch of individual rockets to uh, just clean out these rooms and just weaken the forces in there. And we can run in with the plasma rifle, clear out the rest. And if you take a look behind these crates, you can see some barrels. And if I was to go all the way up, well, the barrels would block me with their infinite height. Because uh, Doom features a rudimentary uh, Z-axis. So with infinite height enemies, uh, we're able to use blast damage to also hit them at an infinite height. Okay. Nice, that went well. So we can get a reset on health, get the Berserk back. We're back to 100%. And we have two final um, pushes that we need to do. Like this, this map feels like an action movie to me. Just explosions everywhere. Hit this switch, uh, which is gonna allow us to get to the final staircase. One percent. Let me out, let me out. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about cutting we're, the clubs? We're, yeah, we're okay here because there's a there's a big 75% health right at the start of this map, so we don't really have to worry about our now we're going to see uh, possibly one of the strangest and also the newest uh, uh, Doom tricks, uh, which is known as an M-Spide or uh, Zero Press, um, where you can basically press switches from further away and through walls by uh, aligning yourself kind of parallel to them and with a spe uh, at a specific pixel. So here you see Dime searching for that specific pixel. And for this particular one, for some reason, you have to actually walk backwards to hit it. And here you see him uh, turn off auto run to give himself a little bit more precision on that movement, as well as the aligning the pixel. There we go. There we go. Have to turn back, always run. And we have a short little map here, and you're going to see a megasphere on a platform. And if you wanted to grab this one over here, uh, you'd have to activate an archfell and do an archfell jump. But there's a secondary one on our route, where we can just grab here. Save ourselves a few seconds. I think we're, we're also we're coming up on another slower map, so I'll probably see if we can do a couple donations. That'd be great, too. Okay, I've got a few here that you might want to hear. I've got a $250 donation from Bouncy Tem, who says, Sup, Dime, Bouncy here. Looking forward to another Final Doom speedrun from you. Rip and tear. It's awesome, Bouncy. Super generous of you. Uh, Cats777 donated $20 and said, Greetings from Erzia. Doom! There were, there were about 40 O's. I'm not sure how long that actually goes for, but there you go. <laughs> that felt about right. Well, it seemed about right, yeah. Uh, here is $25 from Hermina Hildo, who said, First time donating, who says gaming doesn't help lives. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much for chipping in. We appreciate it. A lot of first-time donors at this event already. And that's great. Uh, one more so I can throw it back to you with a question from the audience. Um, uh, Mchop uh, donated $150, said, What's up, Dime? I pledge $150 plus $10 for each face rocket during this run. Who will join me? All hail King Dime. So maybe explain to the folks what a face rocket is if it's not up. Pretty much every time I take out the rocket launcher, if I um, slam my rocket into a wall and <laughs> destroy myself, then that is considered a face rocket. Come on, Mikey Vist, out of the way. Have we had a face rocket I, th yet I think we, the run? we had a minor one on metal, but it wasn't a really bad All one. Right. a second reactor here and there was a worker who got stuck and kind of mutated into a pain elemental. <laughs> Feels 
just see this in a second. Fortunately for us, the uh, the key card is somehow not damaged at all, so we were able to get that out of the reactor. Not really sure what they're making these things out of, because they're uh, pretty indestructible. Didn't have the random barrel that comes backwards. Okay, so on Steelworks, if you're going to look at the starter platform, uh, there are line death, like special actions on it that are going to activate four major crushers later on in the map. That's going to be in the main hub section. And if we're fast enough, uh, we can catch some quicker cycles, but I'm not really seeing that with my health. Yeah, this is, a, this is another map just full of hit scanners. So with the, with the lower health, you're going to see him probably take this a little bit slower so he doesn't get shredded. The crushers here are also particularly dangerous because they are slow crushers, which actually do uh, 1,600 damage total. So regardless of how much health you have, you're, gonna, you're going to die if you're stuck under it. The one just, situation and, where you can save yourself is um, in E3, uh, E3, M4 in the original Doom, there is a crusher with an invulnerability, and there is enough time for an invulnerability to save yourself from a slow crusher, but that is the only way that you can uh, stay alive. Yeah, and just to add insult to injury for those crushers, they're also on a damaging floor that is 20% of your health per tick. Just in case the crushing, <laughs> yeah. And you know, just in case that wasn't bad enough, the the t the twenty percent damage sectors also have a chance to penetrate the effect of a radiation suit. Yeah, which uh, is about a three percent chance, if I remember correctly. Yeah. We have a spider mastermind that we're gonna find in the last room. See what he's doing. Oh. Yeah, and we're going to keep out the super shotgun because it has a really high chance to stun enemies like the Spider Mastermind that will get hit by all the pellets. This is widely considered uh, one of the best maps in TNT, but the exit is nonsensical in that we don't need to get keys, we don't need to press switches, we're just going for the BFG 9000, and then we just go into this corner pocket and then end the map. Yeah, the rest of that map only really serves a purpose to get to the secret map. So there's there's a lot of uh, kind of secret hunting on that map where you can go around and find a bunch of switches and it opens up the other side of the exit, which takes you to map 31. But those those maps are not needed for this speedrun, so we're just not going to do them. And, and map 31 in particular is actually broken in the original version. Then they had to release a update to it afterwards. Uh, you can complete the map with a, uh, an un unintended skip, but there's a key missing on on the on regular original version, and that makes it impossible to complete it normally. So uh, there are like a bunch of different opinions on kind of the quality of TNT evolution as a whole. And I was trying to think of like a way to explain it because I believe the first 15 or so maps are excellent. But um, when we get into the last 15, is there are some giant maps that we'll see. Um, but so, I always feel like I'm so busy during this run. Um, so with the original id software, uh, Tom Hall was sent off to go analyze like some military installation so that they could base maps on that. But they made the conclusion after um, seeing the final products that realism in maps was not very interesting. But in TNT, like we will see these giant rooms with kind of few monsters, and um, like in deepest reaches. All of the caverns are very like narrow and claustrophobic and like a little bit unfun to go through. In, in this map, you'll see another uh, uh, fairly common trick in Doom, where um, Doom guy can actually walk through gaps that are the same size as him, um, but it is um, more complicated than just walking through it because uh, when you just try rushing through it, you don't go through. 
Uh, and it's a bit, it's a fairly complex trick with a lot of intricacies and nuance, but uh, so I'll only talk about just this direction and uh, without a wall. Here you have to actually align yourself with the gap. If you have a wall, you can uh, avoid that. You can use the wall to align yourself. He's, and because of the south, quick. Um, you, it is easier than some other directions. As for the Casalis who made Plutonia, well, they, they were also part of Team TNT and they created all of the Plutonium maps, but they uh, did Mill, Pharaoh, so map 18, map 31, and Heck, which is map 28. So they were kind of an integral part of this collective uh, old school Doom community. This will be the first of two rocket jumps coming out. We're gonna use the invulnerability so we can mitigate all of the damage. There we go, one to grab a soul sphere. And we're gonna blow up this barrel because on the back track, uh, you can have a chain gunner that just destroys the barrel um, in front of you and you're harmed by splash damage. Yeah, and you saw that small structure just ran, but we're actually gonna be rocket jumping around from the back side of that to pick up the key that's in there. Yeah, it's a pretty precise mid-air rocket jump. We spotted the Spider Mastermind. Now we're going to get our first uh, sighting of the hulking Cyber Demon, uh, which will be right in our way when we're going for the exit room. But first, we need to shoot this trigger to activate the switch. I'm going to grab a few resources in the Soul Sphere and the Cell Pack. And okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> no problem. In a lot of textures in TNT, you'll, you see the name just like plastered all over. So this uh, map shipping respawning, there's there's like a, a lot of crates that will run across and every single one says TNT. And yeah, TNT. Even the wall there. Uh... Take out a couple monsters and then we're gonna go into a secret area to top off our health with a mega sphere. Get ourselves to 200%, 200%. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to be really careful with manks from close range because uh, combined uh, two mank fireballs can do uh, 128 damage. And since they shoot three volleys, they can go up to 384 if you are not able to get out of the way quickly enough. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to take a small break in the speed run so that we can check out some uh, avant-garde art in Doom. We've got the, the beautiful TNT truck. It's a quality truck. Very high tech. It's the pinnacle of pseudorealism in Doom. Oh boy, so we're at the Drake O'Brien Giants. Um, central processing and administration coming up. But at least it's got a really comfy MIDI to just kind of sit and listen to. But uh, do you want to go through some of the history of Team TNT here, Shock? Yeah, so th since this map is going to go on for a while, um, it's, good, it's a good time to uh, go into another uh, well-known uh, member of the Team TNT. Uh, so, uh, this is a Tom Mustaine. He uh, actually contributed to three of the maps in this set, uh, including map one, actually. And um, he later went on to uh, create something that was intended to be a second kind of final doom, which was uh, Perdition Skate was his creation and also he contributed to Healthy Pay. Although it wasn't accepted by its software, it ended up uh, being released commercially, unofficially. And then later he actually joined um, the Bethesda team and is currently uh, still working on uh, Doom 4 and, and Doom Eternal, I believe. Yeah, he was on the, the stage E3, I think. He was on the Fallout 76 portion, if I remember. Hmm, okay. 
All right, Prolix, I, I think you can do some donations. We're just gonna keep on going through this long adventure exploration map. All right, you got it. Here is a Dr. Hershey with a $50 donation. They said, supporting my fellow docs that also nerd out as well. Thank you, Dr. Hershey. Robert Kruger donated $300. Appreciate it. We've got uh, a donation of $1,000 from Adam W. Wow. <laughs> and Adam says, thanks to King Dime for another awesome, so far, Doom Run. Here's approximately a dollar for every time I die doing the Evolution Map 2 pacifist record. Amazing. Thanks to all the SGDQ <laughs> staff and runners. Looking forward to another great event. We have uh, $100 from Zabrus, who says thanks for bringing back some great memories with Doom. And okay. um, if I could throw it back to you with a question here, $25 from Jay Zinn said, question for Doom speedrunners with so many monsters in a given map. Do you plan ahead for certain enemies you need to kill, or do you just kill anything that gets in your way during the run? Well, we're trying to take out as few monsters as we can, but I wouldn't say there's like a extremely set route for exactly what to take out because it, it depends on your resources how much health do i have how much ammo because uh i can't i can't completely um know uh like my exact health values if you know there's going to be chain gunners doing a bunch of damage right here or there could be a spider mastermind that starts shooting me in this corridor there's an arch file that could hit me or all of the above. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if a map, if a monster isn't uh, directly in the way, you try to avoid it. Uh, if it isn't in the way, you try to kill it. But if you have don't have enough health to um, avoid it, then you might have to kill it anyway. And here you see uh, the first real usage of the BFG in this run. So uh, it works in an unusual way where the main shot blast does a lot of damage, but not nearly as much as the tracers, which are basically like uh, kind of hit scan um, attacks that follow up after the uh, main shot in the direction of the player's view, uh, the shot where the shot fired, but from the player's perspective, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, basically what happens is when, when the BFG is shot, it locks in the angle at which it was shot or like a direction. Um, whenever it impacts an enemy or another object, from the player's current position, the tracers go out at that angle. Yep. So, you know, a, a common use in some other in some other custom map sets is using the BFG to shoot a wall and peek out around the wall to hit a large pack of monsters with just the tracers. And the directions uh, I'm going in and the doors aren't just completely arbitrary. I'm trying to prevent revenants in the central uh, section that we go in uh, from blocking me. And you can see on some of the walls he's uh, running against the wall to build up some speed against it. Basically in certain directions, specifically north and east, you actually uh, double uh, your speed if you run against the wall. Um, due to just how the game basically splits up their movement in two. Um. Okay, now we're going back to grab the uh, final key, the blue key, so that we can go to the second section of an administration, but uh, no worries because it goes pretty quickly. But the entire map area, of the second part is larger than this first section that we're kind of traversing. So over here we get this uh, huge green fortress and you can see the mini-map is just gigantic, but um, there's nothing in our way. So then we can just go here for the soul sphere. And this is intended, like I need to get hit this trigger so that the um, the exit uh, wall lowers. Yeah. 
So you see all these staircases here. Um, Habitat has like a major issue if you're speedrunning this just on pure vanilla. Uh, right now I'm using a source port called Crispy Doom 5.5, which has some removal of uh, static limits. Uh, but in vanilla, you can get a vis plane overflow if you have more than 128 ceilings or flats. So this area here is is prone to crashing. Okay, Prolix, you can uh, go ahead with donations. Nice. My, my favorite time of the round, personally. <laughs> Here's uh, Metiel timing it, chiming in with a $200 donation, and they said, Hello! Uh, hello. hello to you, yeah. Falcon Horse donated $100. Appreciate it. Cody Rogers donated $5. Said, all right, chat, here's my $5. Where's yours? Half a million, here we come. And there's various other donations in here like that. I've got Tarvold with a $5 donation saying, let's start the donation train off. <laughs> yeah, if you weren't aware out there, $5 is our minimum donation amount. So thank you very much for that. So, important here that I conserve health because of a major sequence break that we're going to be doing in map 25 that was discovered. Like, it used to be a two minute long map, but um, it's been cut down to about 20 seconds if I can do this properly. Yeah, basically, this is going to be a uh, something called a line dev skip. So, uh, there is a multiplayer exit on this map that is actually closes when you across a line in the beginning of the map. Um, normally, if you run across it, you can actually cannot uh, skip it because of the direction of the line. Um, but if you build up more speed with a rocket um, and you have the right setup, you can actually completely skip that line and the multiplayer exit will remain open and you'll skip the entire map. So important question. Are rocket jumps considered face rockets? Absolutely. All right. Just want to be clear about that. Yes, we got it there. So if I didn't get that trick, the the, the wall would have closed in on me. Here, you, uh, actually, the exit was that altar in the beginning. Um, there is a very precise pass-only way of rocketing yourself to it, uh, but it is much too precise to perform. Um, this is level design here. <laughs> just three or four elevators that we're going down just constantly with specters. But I'm going to take out my chain gun and we're going to use this to great effect in this hallway because each time I shoot, you'll see that it gets brighter. So it just helps me with navigation. And there's one interesting thing that we... We didn't actually get to see in a, pre in a previous map uh, a couple of maps ago. There's actually a second kind of damaging sector that does 20% of your health per tick. That is actually the kind of sector that you get at the end of an epi like at the end of episode one in classic Ultimate Doom, where when you get low enough on your health, it actually just completes the map for you. Um, we don't use it because it essentially counts as a death exit and you're starting the next map with only a pistol. But well, for the IL, you can actually use that as a way to complete the map validly. Well, you will start the next map with uh, your weapons, but you'll just have very low health and... Oh, is it, it is? Absolutely. Okay. It is. Yes. Um, I thought it was just a death exit. In fact, you actually... In a while, so... You actually can't uh, um, be... Uh, you have to be in the sector alive with low health. You cannot death exit onto the sector with zero mm -hmm. health because that will actually just, you'll just die. You won't, it won't trigger the level ending. Now everybody's favorite map is coming up after ballistics and I feel the map title just encapsulates everything about it perfectly. It's called Mount Pain. <laughs> I think really they were, they were just missing the comma in the name. I mean, there's there's a mount, but most of it's just pain. And back to our metal music. There's this uh, weird maze section that you have to go through, and we need to get to the very end of it. And we're just gonna follow this along and along and along. 
with all of the imps hanging out here, and then we have to press a wall. Yeah, I'll be heading into a very uh, specifically named area of this map. So we get our second red suit. And you can see the difficulties of strafe running when I have enemies in the way with these narrow corridors, because it essentially like blinds half my screen, like attempting to do SR50. But yeah, disaster area, obvious progression. Let's go. Um, once we get on all of these lowering platforms, uh, this final section is going to lower with an invulnerability sphere, and I need to be careful not to go too quick because I can skip some triggers where I can't do, like, future progression. For what it's worth, Jovo, there's no face rockets when he's invulnerable because he's taking no damage. Gonna make m -trop poor by the end of this run. So this section here, um, it doesn't do damage to me now, but after we get out the yellow key, it'll turn into a damaging sector uh, that does like 10% per hit. So we don't want to get too low. Then we're going to end off, we're going to jump from kind of like a small canyon and then we'll kind of show you the mount that uh, the map is based off of. So if you look out in the distance, we can see uh, Mount Payne itself. You know, a little bit of grass and some fresh rebranding, I think they could pull it off. Probably. So we're taking a look at uh, this map area, and it's got three different um, separate quadrants where we're going to pick up keys, and each one is like an homage to the original Doom. So this one uh, kind of looks like Episode 3 from Ultimate Doom, and then we're going to be moving on to the second one um, with a design that uh, imitates Courtyard in Doom 2. You'll see the... Um, it's a maze with these uh, weird face textures. Yeah, specifically these are the marble textures in uh, the, the original Doom. And then the final section, if you recall the spirit world, in Doom 2, you'll see uh, some parts that like, this just screams Spirit World. Mm -hmm. Get the Mega Sphere. And then once we open the final three doors, there's, um, there's about 20 Lost Souls in the final room. And we can just break through that with a single rocket so that we don't need to take anything else out. Uh, so Something I'd like to mention is the very first um, speed run of TNT was done by SDX Vile uh, way, way back in the day. I think it was 1998, and he had an in-game time of 55 minutes and 24 seconds. So the time has come down quite a way since then. Uh, the new world record was taken by Zero Master with a 37.30. He took away my 38.45. I'm kind of used to losing records to Zero Master by now. I get a record, he takes a bet. Uh, you can do a few donations here, Prolex, before we get to the final, uh, the finale. Gotcha, okay. Here's $20 from Deathwing Duck. He says, Doom speedruns are pure insanity and always a joy to watch. Best of luck to King Dime on TNT. Awesome, thanks. Uh, I have $5 here from Jex, who says, to support the runs and to challenge my friends to donate too. So thank you for trying to get something going there, Jex. We, we appreciate it. Every dollar again going directly to Doctors Without Borders during the event. 
I've got uh, two hundred and fifty dollars from Neo Consul. Thank you very much for the generosity. And another two hundred and fifty dollars from wow. Red Bear. No comment with that, but wow, we appreciate. It. Keep it coming. That's awesome. I have a $225 donation from Pierpod Lepkin. No comment. Okay, so on the final level, you have to memorize all of these torches so you get your five seconds, so good luck with that. And there's a little skip where we can go blue torch to blue torch. And um, if you go on any of the wrong platforms, uh, you're teleported onto a voodoo doll, and you Doom Guy instantly dies. Yeah, a voodoo doll in, in this case is actually a second player start, or um, which uh, all their player starts other than the main one actually just become like immobile versions of the player sprite and uh, take 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 damage like the player and lead to pretty weird effects if you uh, damage them or telefrag them. See our last cyber demon. Um, but there's a monster blocking line. So if the cyber demon gets, um, tries to go over that line, it's unable to. Then in the last section, we're going to take out our BFG because we want to uh, knock out a bunch of lost souls um, in our direction. And on map 30, uh, you're capable of being telefragged. So if a lost soul um, lunges at me and it goes into the teleporter and I've just gone in, then that's going to take me out. Now we come to the weirdest icon of sin in um, either of Doom 2, Plutonia, or TNT. We just need to stand on this step. And um, so there's no like platform that you're kind of going up and down. I'm gonna fire some rockets in. We're gonna destroy John Romero and get ready for time. Time. RTA was a 45-54. That's pretty good. I'll, I'll take a 45. Um, like, I was talking in the practice room a little bit, thinking like, oh, TNT, it's a little bit slower than Plutonia, Doom 1 and Doom 2, but just playing it right now, it's, it's, it's still crazy. Like, everything's just going so fast. It feels like a blur. Um, but yeah, I want to thank uh, GDQ for allowing me to do another fun Doom run and being able to showcase it to you all. Uh, thanks to my couch, Jovo, Four Shock Blast, and Matty Ice for coming out. And uh, don't go away, because we've got... Uh, Outland coming up. Thank you so much to King Dime there with that run of Final Doom, the TNT Evolution on UV speed. You're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch. We are setting up for our next run right now. But in the meantime, speaking of Twitch, uh, we'll be right back after these brief ads from Twitch.
How many years have I waited for the warrior of light? Thank you to Final Fantasy XIV for that. One of our many wonderful sponsors here making the event possible. We appreciate it. Got a $100 don donation for here from Scobaloni, who mentions a run up, coming up later in the marathon. They said, how can you beat Marble Madness in four minutes? I look forward to having my mind blown. Well, uh, Scobaloni, um, funny thing, I know one of the runners for that co-op run, uh, but unfortunately I've only ever watched them practice. Where <laughs> where they do the speedrun strats and they beat it really quickly. So I'm honestly not sure why four minutes is considered fast because the only examples I know of are them. So uh, that's, that's very interesting. Thanks. Uh, th and thank you for the $100. I also have uh, $5 here from Nata Rake who says, Prolix's voice is literally too soothing for me to handle. Like, bruh, it's unfair. Well, hey, you know, Asa, Nata Rake, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, my time on the mic here is uh, wrapping up just right now. Uh, after this, we'll have a new host for you for the Outland Any Percent Run by Vuligen. In the meantime, I'm going to send it over to the interview desk. Uh, take it away, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Summer Games Dunquick 2019. I am Darkman, and I am joined by the Hobbit Runner, uh, Crixium98, who is going to be playing The Hobbit uh, right after Outland, which is the next run. So, Crixium, welcome. Hello. Uh, so, thanks for taking a few minutes of your time to kind of answer a few questions for us. Um, so, I'm going to kind of start off, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time you've ever run a game at a GDQ. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And not only that, it's the first time you've ever attended a GDQ too, right? Yes. Is that a little, well, does it feel like extra pressure, maybe a little bit more nervous because of it? Uh, I mean, I already know I'm not going to be that nervous until I get on stage. Mm -hmm. I've been through band and theater and all those kinds of things, okay. so it's just kind of like that for me. Okay, so yeah, so you are involved with band and theater. Uh, tell me about like those uh, hobbies and those professions and how they kind of maybe translate into speedrunning. Are there things that you take away from like band and theater that you can use towards like speedruns? Well. I mean, I know how to work on something until sure. I get it to perfection, sure. but that, I mean, that's I one of the things that I can take yeah. into basically yeah. anything. Absolutely. I think, you know, that's pretty much the biggest thing about speedrunning is, you know, working on it, you know, constantly and constantly and turning that, you know, effort into something that you see, which is what you're going to see uh, pretty shortly. Um, yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about The Hobbit. Uh, you know, this obviously everybody pretty much knows that The Hobbit is, of course, you know, in the uh, famous J.R.R. Tolkien uh, series, but... Right. It's uh, actually... Um, the game I'm playing is based on his first novel, right. and it was made right. back in 2003. Correct. So uh, tell me a little bit about the game. What is it that's unique about it, past the fact that it's just, you know, based off of uh, Tolkien? Like, tell me about the speedrun itself. Like, it, it, from what I understand, it's a pretty broken video game. Well, the speedrun is divided up into 12 different stages. Each stage has its own different tricks and glitches. Some are obviously a lot more glitchy than others. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah, you kind of alluded to it. It's kind of a broken run. Now you you don't really spend a lot of time doing things correctly. Yeah, not really. I think there are like two levels that we play almost close to what they're supposed to be played toward, but then at the end they just nope. Gotcha. So you know, talk to me a little bit about like a game like The Hobbit. You know, it's obviously probably one of the more like lesser known games. You know, in general, like when we're talking about like speedrunning uh, games, um, but you've put a lot of time into this game. You've been playing this game, you know, off and on since, like, since, Well, I've been speedrunning it since 2016. I was playing it for longer than that. Okay. So tell me a little bit about what it's like to speedrun a game like The Hobbit, where, you know, you, you may think, like, you know, mainstay games like, you know, Mario series and the Zelda series, where they have so many people running those games, you know, there's so much attention to it. Whereas with, like, The Hobbit, you may not necessarily get as much attention. Does that maybe change how you approach the game? Does that change, like, how you feel about the game? Or is it really 
pretty much the same as those other well, games. Well, I, I haven't thought of it so much as even just doing it for the attention. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. more thought of it as doing what I enjoy doing with the mm -hmm. game. It's kind of like if you've heard of um, Pan and Koek. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a speedrunner, but he does these weird things with Super Mario 64, which obviously it is a more popular video game, but that's kind of what I like to do with The Hobbit. Sure. And, uh, you know, the, the community itself, it's a pretty close-knit community, is that correct? Yeah, we had, we had maybe 17 members at the start of last year. We've grown a bit ever since the game got into GDQ and ever since its popularity has kind of grown out a bit more. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I guess uh, to kind of like, you know, give like a final question towards this game, you know, what is it that you want people at home to kind of take away from, you know, you speedrunning this game? What is it that they should maybe look out for? What is it that you want them to like know after watching this run? Well, just, you mean throughout the run, what should yeah. they be looking for? No, no, just like something like, you know, what is it, do you want them to like, do you want to see more people speedrun the game? Do you want to see more people get into it? Like that sort of thing. Well, obviously, um, I think this game is a very, very nice speed game. There's a lot of cool tricks and stuff, and I want more people to be able to see it and appreciate it and maybe know that there are more games like this out there that maybe aren't being appreciated as much as they should be. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think that's perfect. That's the perfect takeaway. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for our interview. I just want to take a few minutes in, of uh, Quixium's time to answer some questions. So, thank you so much, Quixium, for thank taking you. time. And don't forget, this run is going to be right after Outland, which is coming up next. So, until then, we're going to sign off for now. I am, once again, Darkman78. This is Quixium98, and we're going to go ahead and throw it over to Prolix. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch and benefiting Doctors Without Borders. My name is Soraya, and I am so excited to be your host for this game. While we're getting set up, I want to mention our amazing prize, um, the 